Good morning, everybody. Happy Monday. Hope you had a nice weekend. Um, we're going to continue on working uh, with the functional groups and working with these organics. So I know that um, some of you have been having a hard time with some of this organic stuff. You know, so we're going to spend a little bit of time working through uh, homework and looking at functional groups again and looking at carbon backbones and see if we can get some things straightened out. Okay, so we're going to start with the challenge question from the other day. Um, we're going to go through homework. Eventually we'll talk about fractional distillation and we'll work a little bit uh, with the notes starting on organic reactions. All right, so uh, plan for this week is to do that today. Uh, Wednesday, we will finish the organic reactions notes up and we'll be done with the unit. And the plan is to take the test on Friday from 9 to 10.30. And it'll be the same format that we've been uh, working on. All right, so that's kind of the plan for this week. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. And the first challenge question was to name and draw the structural formula of CH3, CO, CH3. Well, the first thing you really need to do is we need to look at the structural formula for this. All right, so there's our condensed structural formula. So let's draw our structural formula out. All right, so we start with this first C, all right, and we have three hydrogens coming off of it. One, two, three. And then we run into another C. And the question becomes, is this oxygen atom coming off of this carbon, or is it in the chain? Well, if I put it in the chain, that means this, this carbon won't have enough bonds. It's got to have four, remember. So this oxygen has to be double bonded off of that carbon. So we've taken care of those two. And then finally, we have CH3 group. So now... Here it is, I built it for us, all right, so we could see it. All right, so here's a carbon, a carbon, a carbon. This is called the carbon backbone, all right? It's the number of carbons just attached in a row. So this is one, two, three carbons all attached in a row. And I have a double bonded oxygen coming off this middle carbon. All right, so now, if I have a double bonded oxygen off the middle of the carbon, that tells me what type of functional group it is. All right, so this is a ketone. Okay, double bonded oxygen off a middle carbon. All right, so to name a ketone, we name the longest carbon chain and number it. So we're gonna number it one, two, three. All right, so it's a three carbon chain, which is propane. We drop the E and o add O-N-E. So this is a type of propanone. We need to write where the double bonded oxygen is. Okay, So this would be 2-propanone. All right. Let's look at this. Which compound is an isomer of C4H9O8? Well, first of all, we have to know what an isomer is. It's the same structural formula, uh, same molecular formula, excuse me, same molecular, different structural. So we have to have all the same stuff. So that means we have to have four carbons, nine hydrogen or ten hydrogens, and one oxygen. All right, I have to have that. And then it's going to be in a different arrangement. All right, so... Let's see if we can figure out which one of these it is. All right, can it be D? Can it be C4H10? Well, it can't be this one because there's no oxygen. So it can't be that one. Okay. Let's look at this one. Okay. Can it be this one? Well, if I take a quick look at it, this one has one oxygen. This one has two oxygens. So it can't be that one. Same thing with this one. It can't be this one because it has two oxygens. Okay, so it can't be that one either. So it better be this one. Well, does this have four carbons? One, two, three, four. Yes. 
Does it have 10 hydrogens? Five here, five here, yes. And does it have one oxygen? And the answer is yes. So this is an isomer of that. Now, let's go ahead and I made it. I made a version of it. So this has an OH group coming off of this first carbon. All right, so that makes this an alcohol. All right, so this would actually be, the way I built it, this would be one butanol. Okay. Now, I can take this structure and I can convert it into this thing. All right, well, what is that thing? Well, a C2H5 group is just this. This oxygen has to be in the chain. And then we have another C2H5 group. All right, so this is a type of ether. So remember, my isomer has to made it be made of the same stuff. It's just a different arrangement. So when we make this isomer, all right, I'm gonna pop this off here. This goes in the chain. Uh, let's see here. I need a bond. This is going to go here, and this connects here. And then this hydrogen goes up here. Okay. So I used all the same sticks and spheres. But now I just have a different arrangement. I got a CH3 group here, CH2. I have oxygen in the middle, another CH2, and then a CH3 on the end. All right, so this is my ether. Okay. All right. Now, the next thing I want to show you is a table that I gave you, and I posted it so you can use it. Okay. And this will help you with your um, functional groups. Now you have to know you have to know organic chemistry really to be able to use this because if you don't know your organic at all, you can't use this at all. But this is like hints, all right? So these are our different groups, okay? And what's nice is it gives us our functional groups. So if it's a halide, okay, here are our halides that go on it. This is my alcohol. It's an OH group. My ether is an oxygen in the carbon chain. Here's my aldehyde, my ketone, organic acid, ester, amine, and an amide. All right, so it gives us the groups themselves, gives us the general formulas of those groups. And then finally, it gives me an example of a condensed structural formula and a name. All right, so, okay, this will give us hints on how to name things. All right, so for example, okay, if I'm not sure if I need a number on a halide, I can just look right here and say, hey, I'm going to need a number, right? Or if I'm not sure if I need a number for an organic acid, I can look down here at the name and look at that. I don't need a number, right? So this is going to, you can use this to help you do your structural formulas. And yes, you can use this on the test on Friday if you would like, okay? You can use this. So I would print this off, right? Just so you have it. So we'll play with this as we go today, right? Now, what I want to do is I want to go through the homework, All right? So I'm going to do 18, 19, and 20 with you today. I'm going to do it right now. Right, and I'm going to show you what I would do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the structural formulas. Okay, and I'm actually, I'm going to classify it, and I'm probably going to name it for you too. Okay, we'll see. All right, so let's start with number one. Now I look at number one and the very first thing I'm trying to figure out is what type of compound it is. So I'm looking for the functional group. All right, so now I immediately see Ku. All right, if I see Ku, that tells me that it's an organic acid. Okay, this is gonna be a COOH group. All right, so now I'm gonna draw my structural formula. So I got my C, right, and then it has three H's coming off of it. Right, and then I have another C, and then I have two O's and an H. Well, this is my Ku group. Oops, I'm missing an H. One, two, three, four. 
one, two, three, four. That's good. So there's my there's my structure. Now I can only use these atoms to build it. So this is an organic acid. To name an organic acid, what we do is we count the carbon backbone. So this has two carbons. So two carbon backbone is ethane. We drop the E and add oic acid. So this would be ethanoic acid. Okay. All right, let's go to the next one. Well, I got an O in it. All right, so this is either in the carbon chain or it's coming off of it. All right, so let's let's build the structural formula. So I start here. It's got three hydrogens coming off of it. Then a carbon. All right, so then the O. If I put the O right here coming off of it, that means this carbon will only have two bonds. Well, it can't only have two bonds. So that means this oxygen can't be in the chain. It's got to be coming off with a double bond in the middle. All right, so those two are done. And this is the one that we just did. Okay, so this is a ketone. Okay, and this would be propanone. Okay, but with a ketone, we need a number. All right, and if you don't remember, we can look here. Okay, so here's my ketone, my double bonded oxygen. All right, here's an example, and it has a number. All right, so this is coming off of the second carbon, so this would be 2-propanone. All right, let's go on to number 3. All right, so as soon as I see this, I got this OH group here. That tells me that it's an alcohol. Okay, it's an alcohol. Okay, let's go ahead and draw the structural formula. So we start with this C. It's got three H's. Then we go to the C, it has two H's, and then it's got an OH group. Okay, so there's my structural formula. Now, how would I number this? Would I number it one, two, or would I number it one, two? Well, this group has to come off the smallest, so this is one, two. Let's take a look at table R. Here are my alcohols. Oop, there's my OH group. Okay, so how do I name an alcohol? Oh, I'm going to drop the E and add OL, and I need a number. All right, well, I have a two-carbon backbone. So this is ethane. Drop the E, and we're going to add OL, ethanol. And this is one ethanol. Okay. Let's go on to this one. Ooh, we got oxygen again in the middle of that chain. So the question is, is it coming off of it like a ketone or is this an ether? Well, let's tr see what happens. So we got C with three H's. We have C with two H's. So can this oxygen be coming off of this carbon with a double bond? And the answer is no. So that means this O has to be in the chain. And then we have... So this is an ether. To name them, we have alkyl groups. We name the alkyl group on the left, and we name the alkyl group on the right. All right, so this alkyl group is an ethyl group. So we got ethyl. This is a methyl group, one carbon chain. Methyl, ether. Number five, we got a hull, okay, not OH, but HO. This tells us, okay, this tells us that it's an aldehyde, okay, tells us that it's an aldehyde. So you have a double bonded oxygen on the end carbon. So this oxygen is double bonded to this carbon. So let's draw it, C with three H's. C with two H's, a C with the double bonded O, and an H. So there's my aldehyde group. All right, so now to name an aldehyde, let's take a quick look over here. Here's my O, o 
double bonded O and an H coming off the end carbon. I don't need a number, and we're going to add AL. Okay, so we got one, two, three carbon chain, so that's propane. Drop the E and add AL, propanal. So this would be propanal. All right, let's look at this one. Okay, I got an OH group. As soon as I see an OH group, that's an alcohol. Okay, so this is an alcohol. I want to draw it. We got a carbon with three hydrogens, a carbon with one hydrogen, and an OH group coming off of it, and then a carbon with three hydrogens. Okay. All right, so this is a three carbon chain, three carbons in a row, which is propane. We drop the E and add OL. So this is propanol. All right. But it would be, I need a number. Where is this OH group? Okay. It's two propanol because it's coming off the second carbon. All right. Let's do this one. Cuckoo. Got a cool group. What does that tell me? Organic acid. Tells me that it's an acid. So let's go ahead and draw it. CH3, which takes care of that. Then we have a CH2 group. Then we have a C, and the acid looks like this. Now again, if you don't know what it, remember what it looks like, here it is. Here's my C, double bonded O, OH. Right now, we name the longest carbon chain, and we add ic acid. One, two, three carbons, propane. So this is a type of propanoic acid. No number. All right. Now, as soon as you see two O's like this, as soon as you see that, the only one that has this, okay, is an ester. Okay, it's the only one that has a double bonded O just like that. All right, so that means this O right here is double bonded to this carbon. And this O links these two carbons. So let's go ahead and draw it. We got CH3, CH2, C, double bonded O, O, CH3. Now, this is the one that's complicated. You have to name the side, there's two sides to it. The O is kind of like our dividing line. Okay, the, we, we name the side without the double bonded first. So this is an alkyl group. Okay, so this would be methyl. Why methyl? Because it's got one carbon. Then we name this, this carbon chain on the other side of this oxygen. It's a three carbon chain, so that's propane. Drop the E and add O8. So this would be methyl propanoate. Okay, methyl propanoate. Okay, let's see if I need numbers or something. Here it is. Uh, matter of fact, hey, look here. It's the one that we just drew. Methyl propanoate. So this is methyl propanoate. All right, here we go. We got this O again. Question is, is it coming off the carbon chain or in the carbon chain? Well, let's see. So we got C. Oops, that's an H and an H. Then we go to this one. C with two H's. Then we go to the C. Now, is this going to be in or coming off of? Well, if I put the O here, this carbon doesn't have four bonds. So it's got to have a double bonded oxygen coming off of it. And then a CH3 group. Okay, so this is a double bonded oxygen on a middle carbon. So this is a ketone. Do we need a number for a ketone? I can't remember. Do we need a number for a ketone? Ketone, yep, we need a number. And it ends in own. All right, so so we have to number this. Do I number it one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, four? This has to come off the lowest possible carbon. So it's gonna be numbered this way. So what's a four carbon backbone? Four carbons in a row right here. That would be butane. We drop the E and add own, so this is butanone. 
it would be 2-butanol. All right, let's do this one. Again, we got an oxygen sitting in the middle, so it's either coming off of it or it's in. So we got our CH3 group. And this has to be in the carbon chain. So this makes it an ether. Okay, to name an ether, we name the alkyl group over here. We name the alkyl group over here, and it ends in ether. So this is a methyl group. This is a methyl group. So it would be methyl, methyl, ether. But do we ever say the same group twice? Nope. So this would be di, methyl, ether. And that's how we would do that page. All right, let's go ahead and do 19. So now this time we got to name them. All right. Well, the first thing you want to do is you got to figure or find your functional group. Okay, so number one, we got an OH group. That tells me it's an alcohol. Do I need a number for an alcohol? I do need a number, so I have to number this. Am I going to number it 1, 2 or 1, 2? Well, the OH has to come off the smallest, so it's 1, 2. Okay, what's a 2-carbon backbone? That's an ethane. So this is ethanol, ethanol, and it's 1 ethanol. Okay. Let's do the next one. Again, find the functional group. Here it is. A double bonded oxygen on a middle carbon. That's a ketone. Do I need a number for a ketone? Yep, I do. And it ends in own. So does it matter 1, 2, 3 or 1, 2, 3? In this case, it doesn't matter because it's the same. So this would be propane, which turns to propanone, and it's 2-propanone. Okay, all right, let's look at number three. Again, we look for the functional group. Here it is. Okay, we got a double bonded oxygen on an end carbon. Double bonded oxygen on an end carbon. Double bonded oxygen, well, maybe I don't remember, so I can go over here. All right, so this isn't double bonded, no double. Oh, here's a double bonded oxygen. Is it on the end? The answer is yes, so it's an aldehyde. Right, this is an aldehyde. Ooh, do I need a number for an aldehyde? Do I need a number? Where's the aldehydes? Nope, I don't, they end in AL. All right, so this is a one, two, three, four carbon backbone, four carbons in a row. Okay, so that's butane, okay, we drop the E and add AL. This would be butanal. Okay. Let's try this one. All right, again, look for your functional group. Oh, there it is. What's that thing? That's an organic acid. Okay, that's an organic acid. All right. How do we name an organic acid? Uh, organic acid. Oh, ic acid. No number. Ic acid. All right. So I have to count the backbone. Two carbon backbone, which is eth. Ethane. Drop the E. Ethanoic acid. No number. Okay. All right. Let's do this one. Actually, we just did this one a minute ago. Okay. We have an oxygen in the chain which makes it an ether. We name this side first, then this side. So this is a methyl group. This is a methyl group. So it would be methyl, methyl, ether, or dimethyl, ether. Okay. Let's do number six. As soon as I see number six, I got two oxygens smack dab in the middle here. I got a double bonded oxygen up and one in the chain. This is an ether. 
Ethers are kind of hard to name. All right, so we got to find the oxygen that's the dividing line. Here's my dividing line. The one that's in the chain is the dividing line. This is going to be an alkyl group, the side without the double bonded oxygen. So over here, this is an alkyl group. It's a methyl, ethyl, n-propyl, or n-butyl. Well, this one's a, this is just a methyl group. We name that first. So this would be methyl. And then we name the side with the double bonded, and it's a, it's a carbon chain, two carbons in a row. Ethane, drop the E and add O8, methyl ethanoate. All right, seven, look here, OH group, alcohol. Okay, how do we name an alcohol? Oh, we need a number and ol uh number so i'm going to number it one two three four or one two three four left to right it's coming off the two right to left it's coming off the three so i have to go one two three four so what's a four carbon chain okay it's butane we drop the e and add ol butanol and this would be two Butanol. Okay. Number eight. Cuckoo! We got an organic acid. Okay. Name the longest carbon chain. So this is three. Drop the E and add oic acid. So this is propane. Drop the E and add oic acid. Propanoic acid. All right, let's go to this one. All right, double bonded oxygen on the end carbon. So this is an aldehyde. Do I need a number for an aldehyde? Nope, because it's always on the end. And we're going to add Al. Two carbons. One, two. Ethane. It becomes ethanol. Right. Last one on this page. Let's find our functional group. Here it is. Double bonded oxygen in the carbon chain. This is a ketone. Okay, it's coming off a middle carbon. All right. So let's look at ketone over here again. All right. Here's ketones. Double bonded oxygen. Oh, I need a number, and it adds ends and own. So the question is, how do I number this? One, two, three, four. Or one, two, three, four. If I number it left to right, it comes off the third carbon. Right to left, it comes off the two carbon. So we're going to number it one, two, three, four. All right. So a four carbon chain is butane. We drop the E and add own. So this would be two butanone. Okay, last one we're going to cover is number 20. We're going to do this one. Okay, so we got to draw the structural formulas of butanoic acid. Well, okay, so here we go. Bute is four carbons in a row. So that's what I would do first. I've got four carbons in a row. Now, organic acid. Oh, that's that double bonded oxygen OH group on the end. So on this end carbon, I would need a double bonded O and an OH. Now I have to go back and fill in hydrogens by counting to four. So this one has one bond, so it's going to need three hydrogens. This one has two bonds, so it needs two hydrogens. This one has two bonds, so it needs two hydrogens. This one has one, two, three, four bonds already, so it doesn't need anything, and that's all set. All right, so that's butanoic acid. All right, Methan ale. Well, what is ale? Which one's an ale? Which one's an ale? Here's OL, ethers. Oh, here's AL. That tells me it's an aldehyde, which means I have a double bonded oxygen on an end carbon. Okay, well, meth means one carbon. So I got one carbon. I have a double bonded oxygen on it. 
Now I have to add hydrogens. Well, this only has two bonds, so it needs two hydrogens. There's my methanol. They turned right around and did methanol. This is an alcohol. Meth means one carbon. Okay. OL tells us that it's an OH group coming off of it. Doesn't matter which way. There it is. Then I have to go back and put in my hydrogens. This needs four bonds. There's my methanol. Okay, butanone. Well, if you don't remember what own stands for, let's look. Oh, no, 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 no. Here it is. Ketone. Double bonded oxygen on a middle carbon. So bute means four, so we need four carbons in a row. And a double bonded oxygen in the middle. We'll put it there. Then we have to go back and fill in my hydrogens. This one needs three. That one doesn't need any. This one needs two. And this one needs three. This is actually 2-butanone. Alright, diethyl ether. Well, the ethers are where we have that oxygen in the chain, so I'm going to put that oxygen down first. Okay, now we have an alkyl group over here and an alkyl group over here. Diethyl means that I have two ethyl groups, one on each side. So an ethyl group is a C2H5 group. So it would look something like that. Okay, now don't worry about this methyl formate thing. That's a common name that you don't need to know. So we're going to work on methyl methanoate. This is an ester. It's an ester. Okay, so I think these are the hardest ones. So if we go to the ester, here it is. Okay. It's got a double bonded oxygen and an oxygen in the chain. So the first thing I do when I have an ester is I write a double bonded oxygen. Okay, I draw that first. This is the side without the double bonded oxygen. I need a methyl group on the side without the double bonded oxygen. There it is. And then this is the carbon chain on the other side, which is just one. Well, there's my one, so I don't need any more carbons, right? And that has to be a hydrogen atom. That would be your methyl methanoate. OL tells us it's an alcohol, and it tells us that it's on the third carbon. So what's my backbone? Pentane. Five carbons. Five carbons in a row. I'm going to number it one, two, three, four, five. On the third carbon, I have an OH group. Then I got to go back in and fill in my hydrogens. This one needs three. This one needs two. This one needs one. This one needs two. This one needs three. All right, let's do methanoic acid. Again, don't worry about this formic acid. You don't need to know that. It's a common name. All right, so acids. Is that C double bonded OH SKU group? Okay. Math tells me that we have one carbon. Whew, look at that, we have one carbon. Okay, now we have to fill in our H's. This carbon has one, two, three bonds. It needs one more. And we're done. Propanal. Aldehyde. Okay. Aldehyde, which means. Okay, we, if you don't remember, we can go over here. That means we have this double bonded oxygen on the end. What does prop tell us? Three carbons. We need a double bonded oxygen on the end. And then we go in and fill our hydrogen. So this only has one bond, so it needs three. This has two bonds, so it needs two. This has three bonds, so it needs one. And we'll do our last one. Two pentin own ketone, okay, which means a double bonded oxygen on a middle carbon. And that double bonded oxygen is on the two carbon. So 
So we start with our backbone, pent, which is five. Let's number it. We have a double bonded oxygen on that two carbon. So we have a double bonded oxygen here. Then we have to go fill in hydrogen. So this only has one, so it needs three. This has one, two, three, four. It doesn't need any. This has two, so it needs two. This has two, so it needs two. This has one, so it needs three. And that's page 20. Okay. So 21, I'm just going to post for you. Okay, so I will post this for you so you can check your answers. Um, D is a problem, all right? There are two answers to D depending if you think it's typo. Okay, if it's an AL, it's one thing. If it's an OL, it's something else. Okay, so that was an issue. I will post this one. Hopefully that helps you a little bit with our functional groups. All right. So I want to talk a little bit about fractional distillation. This is just really quick. Fractional distillation. Well, remember, distillation, we've already talked about it. It separates, it separates a mixture by boiling point. Okay, so fractional distillation is a special way of separating carbon chains by boiling point. It separates different length carbon chains by boiling points. Now, let's talk about this real quick. Our organic compounds are nonpolar compounds for the most part. So if our organic compounds are nonpolar compounds, Their intermolecular forces are van der Waals or London forces or dispersion forces, however you remember. Now, do you remember anything about those intermolecular forces? Are these the strongest, the weakest? What are these? Okay, well, these are the very weakest. Okay, they're very weak forces. Okay, so generally, because they have these very weak forces, organic compounds have low melting and boiling, boiling points. So organic compounds generally have low melting and boiling points. Now, the longer the carbon chain, the longer the carbon chain, the stronger the VDWs. If we have stronger van der Waal forces or London forces or dispersion forces, that means it's going to have a higher melting point and boiling point. So for example, let's say that we have ethane. It's a very short chain. There aren't many intermolecular forces between these. Okay, Let's compare that to like octane. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And all these hydrogens. Which one's going to have more van der Waal forces?
Which one's going to have more Vanderwall forces? Okay, this is going to have way more Vanderwall forces. So it's going to have a higher melting and boiling point. Now we can use these differences in melting and boiling points or boiling points to separate them and that's called fractional distillation. And I want to show you this. I don't know how, how well that's going to show up. Right, but this is called a fractionating column. Okay, so this is how Okay, we take our crude oil, so we pump the oil out of the ground. We got to separate separate it into parts, all right? Because we 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 use the parts for different things, all right? So first of all, all carbon chains less than five, all carbon chains less than five are going to be in gaseous form, all right? So methane, pro uh, methane, ethane, propane, and butane, those are all gases. Okay. Starting with pentane, those are liquids. So here we go. What we do here is we put the crude oil in and we heat it up. Okay, We heat it up. And the first ones that the first ones that start to boil off are the carbon chains that are 5 to 12 carbons long. Okay, and they boil off somewhere around 40 to 175 degrees Celsius. All right, so they boil off first. All right, so once all of these have boiled off, we raise the temperature a little bit more. And at 150 degrees Celsius, between 150 and 275, we have carbon chains that are 12 to 16 carbons long. All right, so the 5 to 12 we use for gasoline. That's what we use to drive our cars. Kerosene is 12 to 16. Once we have these carbons boiled off, we raise the temperature up even more and we get fuel oil. Now, I don't know if you live way out in the country, you may use fuel oil to heat your house. Okay? So some people out in the country use fuel oil. Once the 15 to 18 carbons are gone, we raise the temperature even more up to 400 and we get lubricating oils. Right? This is like the oil in your car. And then finally, we have carbons that are longer than 20. Okay, longer than 20. All right, and these are uh, what we use to, for wax and asphalt and tar. We use this stuff to make our roads. Okay, so these are really long carbons. Okay. So the way we can separate different lengths of carbon chains is by doing fraction, uh, fractional distillation. Okay, so I just wanted to show this to you. I'm actually going to post this for you. All right. The last thing we're going to do is we're going to start page 28. Okay. We're going to start page 28. And these are organic reactions. And a lot of this stuff we actually just talked about. So we're going to th fl flow through this, fly through this stuff real quick. All right. So some general properties of organic compounds. The main component of an organic compound is carbon. We already knew that. Okay. The four valence electrons of carbon allow it to form four covalent bonds in the shape of a tetrahedron or a tetrahedral. We knew that too. There are more organic compounds than inorganic compounds. Okay. So organic compounds, there's lots of them. Inorganic compounds or carbons without car uh, molecules without carbon, there aren't many compared to organics. There's hundreds of thousands of organic compounds. Okay, just a few hundred inorganic. Where do we get our organic compounds from? Petroleum, oil, coal, wood, plants, and animals. So any living organism. They are nonpolar. Okay, they dissolve in. Oops, that's a typo should say nonpolar solvents. Most of them are non-electrolytes. They don't conduct electricity. Okay, there's a few, there's one that does. Not very well, but it does. Organic acids. Generally have low melting points. We just talked about that. Organic reactions are slower than inorganic reactions. And we talked about this in kinetics. 
Organic reactions take a long time. Inorganic reactions are faster. All right, now, we just did this. Which of the following have greater dispersion forces between molecules? Okay, and we did this. And let's use this one. Okay, which one's going to have more dispersion forces? Remember, longer the chain, stronger the van der Waal forces. Okay, so this one will have the higher boiling point. The longer the carbon chain, the greater the VDW, and the higher the boiling point. Okay. All right. Um... Let's see, do I want to stop there? Let's stop there, okay? And we're going to pick up with the organic reactions next class. All right, have a good afternoon, and we'll talk to you soon.